All right, today I'm joined by somebody that is uh, now Canada's bouldering national champion and lead national champion, although not the first time that he's held those ranks at the same time. It is, of course, Guy McNamee, who over the last week uh, won the national championships here out in Ontario. Um, Guy, thanks for, for joining us. My first question right off the bat is like, how did your skin hold up? after doing all of these rounds like four you had four days of climbing within five days and that's all i could think about the entire time was how everybody's tips were holding up um i, I was pretty lucky i like quite often like after um semis my skin's like okay and then usually i tape my fingers in iso while warming up so that i, I save my skin just for the competition and I feel like that that's helped. And then, in like the, on the rest day, I just use a bunch of rhino skin. And I just like hope for the best, I guess. <laughs> I feel like you must have tough skin though, because boulders like the the first two days were were bouldering, and boulders spent a lot of money on like new mm. holds with really rough friction. There was blood like all over the place. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you caused any blood technicals, but I know like half of the people in finals, the judges were up there like checking on it. Yeah. The setters had the brushes out. Like, do you do you think you have tougher skin uh, yeah, on your fingers I, than I, most? I think so. Like, I, like, my skin's only bled twice, like in my whole timing. Wow. Like, like, I'm proud of that. Um, and. Funny enough, both times were like just after the final climb in finals, just like you got perfect timing. And then, yeah, <laughs> calculated, it, calculated That's crazy. it perfectly. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, That's a pretty, yeah, pretty nice perk as a climber. So, so congratulations on uh, winning both of these national championships. Like, that's obviously not something that that a lot of people would like put on their list of goals for a season. That's a lot to ask for is to win both national champs. Um, And I thought you said in one of the interviews that you you didn't really come in. Maybe it was just for the lead discipline, but you didn't quite show up looking for a win necessarily at this event. Um, How how like in the last couple months? How has your climbing been? How's your fitness been? What were your goals coming into nationals this time? Because um, I, as in, you know, I was kind of at the World Cup um, circuit, did mm-hmm. a bunch of World Cups. I was kind of partly satisfied, partly not satisfied. And I was really looking forward to training. And, like, like I guess all that time I couldn't really train at all. So that was exciting. And then um, also not having a coach was definitely quite a different experience. That was, like, a little nerve-wracking, but also, like, really exciting. So... I created a training program, like a six month, sorry, six, yeah, sorry, six, six month um, training um, program, which kind of gets three phases in each, each lasting like um, two months. So I'm um, into that, I guess. Um, we were like, Kendra and I, we, were, we did um, two months of finger strength, and then one, we were one month into our technique phase, and that was like all bouldering. And then like one day a week we did like one or two lead climbs just to like not completely lose our lead, but mainly just to focus on what each phase um required. So going into nationals, we were quite boulder ready. But then lead was like the only the lead training that we had done was like year eight, which I find it quite helpful and then and then just like doing a lead climb like once a week so So because of that i wasn't your connection just dropped for just like five seconds there for that last little bit what were you what were you saying things were leading up to uh, after the um uh after the technique phase you were saying you're halfway into the technique phase for nationals oh yeah we were like one month into that we were one month into the technique phase before we flew off to nationals so because of that we were like I was feeling pretty strong for bouldering. I was like, okay, let's do this thing. Lead was like, I did not know where I was going to be. Either just like falling all, all over the place or maybe somehow um, scrap it together. Yeah. That was... Well, it worked out okay. What yeah. um, what yeah. What is that six months building up to? Like it's a six month training program. So what uh, what's that supposed to lead up to? Is that like selection camps or is that the start of like the World Cup season? Um. It's supposed to be the start of the World Cup season. Okay. So, I guess at the six months, it would um, end in like February. And then um, the World Cups are in April. 
So mm. I have like much to like, I guess, look at um what I was missing a little bit. And like the all the phases the phases kinda ended with lead. So then but then the first World Cups of Bordeaux. So it would be like end with lead, get a lot of kind of lead experience and then kinda guess in the last month kinda switch over to bouldering. So right, that, like ramp ramp back up again kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Explain to me, you, you mentioned like not having a coach was something that was different. What uh what's up with your coaching situation? Like I the, the way I normally phrase it, because now that you're um like now you're you're an adult competitor right you're not a youth competitor anymore so with kids you just like you usually have a coach right you've got the coach of your youth team but now as i'm sure you've experienced you've probably got multiple people in your life that contribute different Mm -hmm. things to your climbing maybe so i usually phrase as like who is your team is it is it just a coach is it a nutritionist are your parents involved so uh you said like you didn't have a coach at this point what uh, what are you talking about there have you have you made any changes or what's up so um like um christian was our coach before but then he had to move to um kind of like in the okanagan yeah that area and then um Guess because of that, like there's not like a huge number of coaches, like really top notch coaches in Canada. So it was like he left, and then we were kind of like, we were kind of thinking like, oh, should we um like look into coaches like elsewhere or like like distant coaches abroad? But then we were like, oh, yes, thinking about it, we 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 figured that we we had a lot of ideas that we kind of knew we could put into place. So we figured that giving it a shot would might might be something that could could work. So we put together a plan that we quite liked. Um we briefly ran it um by some coaches. And then we were like some kind of like the national coach and um our old coach Christian um took a glance at it and then we were we were pretty happy with it. And then yeah, I guess we just kinda of started following that. So it's it's pretty easy as like now that you've had obviously two wins, your brother also had an excellent nationals. Like mm-hmm. your brother comes second in bouldering, and frankly, he topped more boulders than you did over the mm-hmm. over over those two days. So he probably feels pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course he performed great in in uh, lead as well. So right now it would be really easy to say like, yeah, our training is going great, our plan is mm-hmm. working perfectly. Um, yeah. The day before nationals, though. How did you feel about your training plan? Were you happy with this this homemade thing that you guys had going, or were you like a little bit uncertain? I was I was feeling pretty confident, as in, I I, I guess I also the comp before it, we had a, like a local November sessions that I won and Kindle I um, came third in, so that definitely kind of helped boost our confidence. And I guess um, but you could almost it's sometimes nice with. In training, you can almost just feel yourself getting better. Where you're like, I can hold this crimp longer or just like pull off these moves. And well, whereas maybe a few months ago, you would not have been able to do it, or at least not as easily. So I think we could just feel ourselves being, becoming better. So I think with that, it was, we, we knew we were going to, at least, we were better climbers. It was just more wood out climbing show it at that competition right how did uh there must have been a dream between you guys to like finish a comp ending one two right yeah like, that must have been a very satisfying day for you guys mm-hmm. as in we were funny how like before the um season started we were almost kind of joking around we were like okay this year we're gonna come first and second at Boulder nationals <laughs> let's do it as in we didn't really treat that seriously we were just kind of like joking around but then <laughs> it's kind of funny that it happened <laughs> It like you know as well as anybody that the field and and where you place at a nationals goes so up and down from year to year. Like for the most part, it's often the same guys approximately in the top yeah. ten or the top twenty. Mm-hmm. But last year, for example, for you is probably like not as satisfying a year. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some people that show up one year and don't show up the next. Um, but I think for the most part, if if you had to like name drop the list of Canadian male athletes in climbing right now you're in that like frankly especially if you're talking about like both disciplines you're kind of in like the top three for sure Mm -hmm. um what kind of pressure does that put on you man like especially as you go into like an olympic cycle like um do you do you feel pressure coming from from you know your friends from the people just in the climbing community or from from the the uh 
from like the CEC or anything like that? How are you handling all that? Like, I don't feel actually that much pressure. I guess like one thing I think might just be that the more pressure that is maybe imaginary on, on me is never going to be bigger than the pressure that I'm going to put on myself. So I guess in that way, it's like I've learned how to like the, to handle pressure like from years and years of competing. So I think that's just like something that I'm guess used to being like, I, I want to do well. It'd be awesome if I don't, if I do, if I don't, then that's okay too. And I, I guess not really thinking that much about what other people are expecting of me. Right. Well, let's talk about like big pressure events. Let's talk about all those world cups you did. Like, did you have a good time this season? Cause you hit up a bunch. I don't, I didn't count how many, but like you, you competed in a lot of them in bouldering mm-hmm. and lead. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you had, you had the semifinals finish in Salt Lake city too. Like, did you enjoy yourself? I'm sure 15th feels really good, but did you have yeah. fun? Like aside from doing well that comp? Yeah, it was, it was a pretty, pretty fun experience. I just like traveling all over, I guess getting the experience of world caps. Well, it would have been nice, nice to do a bit better at some of them, for sure. But just kind of getting that experience and being like, I think, like, funny, um, I find that sometimes not doing as well at maybe World Cups is more motivating than um, than doing well. As in, like, right now, I'm almost in, like, the, <laughs> I guess I'd like to call almost, like, the post um post-achievement depression kind of get stage where it's almost like feeling the like the lower the low after the mighty high so it's just kind yeah of trying to find the psyche again a little bit to kind of get back into like the training phases but yeah. um the world cup season is kind of weird because like you alluded to you don't really get to train while you're in the world cup season it's just kind of about like staying healthy and trying to keep like peak performance mm-hmm. and stuff but at the same time you you get to be around all these other climbers that you don't get to hang out with all the time. So mm-hmm. you're with the Canadian team, which is a bunch of faces that you know, but you don't normally spend that much time with year to year. You're with a different coach. So for instance, like Malik uh, Talib is back. Yeah. Um, what's the team dynamic like? And, and um, kind of what do you take away from that, that group of people once, uh, once those events are over? Do you, do you like, do you get psyched being around that group of people? Do you find it's like a, a really helpful, positive environment with them? I think like usually it, it, it is as in it's I a bunch of the people I got to know quite a bit better after kind of spending months kind of competing, you know, and sometimes like living in the same kodos as they are. So I think like that's definitely nice. And I think I think also kinda of gets important to to know that it's like often like being away from home that long can take its toll, like mentally. So I think also being like giving time for yourself away kind of from everyone sometimes just to be like kind of take a deep breath, be like, okay, like I guess a lot of people aren't used to being surrounded with that many people for such a long time. So having some time to almost do your own thing sometimes is definitely beneficial. I definitely feel that uh, living living with an entire team would be my nightmare. Honestly, that's mm-hmm. my <laughs> that's not my dream. Mm-hmm. Um, so so after spending a year on on the comp season, you are now acutely aware of what you're good at compared to the very best boulders and lead climbers in the world, and you've seen yourself climb on those same boulders and all that kind of stuff. What do you feel like like what's left for you to do? What do you need to start competing? at the highest level with those guys in the top 20 regularly and maybe get to finals and maybe get to podiums. Like, have you identified what it is you need to do if that's what you want to achieve? As in, I guess you want to like, usually you think like, yes, but then I feel like every time it's almost like, maybe like sometimes you're like, I know what I need to do, but then maybe it's not. So it's like, like right now, it feels like um, I know what to do, but then at other times I've felt like I felt like that too, but then have been wrong. I like right now I feel good about training, and I feel like right now it feels almost like a more of like a not one specific like oh I need to get really really strong fingers or like I just need to get really good slab. I think it's a bunch of 
small things like get a bit stronger on fingers, maybe read the route better, just more experience on these kind of routes. And I think putting all those things together, bit by bit, you'll get to to that level. Do you feel like you need to, um, like, I know it's a bunch of athletes kind of in your generation are, are considering kind of like leaving home, going to places where they can get more time with high level athletes or, or at gyms where there's a bit more of a community. Like, is that something that you or, or your brother have talked about or considered? Like whether it's Salt Lake City for a month or Japan for a year, like those kind of, is that something you've thought about? Because I know a lot of athletes do feel like just because of how few people there are, Climbing in Canada can feel a little bit limiting sometimes. Like, um, right now, um, that's definitely something that's kind of like, like, definitely present, that whole kind of lack of people to train with sometimes. It's, an, it's nice that we have each other. And then there's also a little bit of, like, the lack of facilities, which is one of the things that you, we're going to, Kendra and I are going to Innsbruck in February to... For, for like six months um, to do some training there, kind of mostly lead, just to kind of, just to work that. And like for bouldering, we found that we can make up climbs pretty successfully, kind of just like make a coordination down here, make some slab. But I think it'd be nice to kind of guess work a little bit more on doing climbs that were like specifically set for you instead of making the climbs yourself. And and I'm, I'm not, we haven't really thought about where we'd go to do that since bouldering is a little bit maybe hard or to kind of get find like constantly new competition boulders set. So maybe like, maybe Salt Lake City, maybe, like, I don't know. That's why I'm, I'm really glad you guys are. So you say you're going, like in February you're going? Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge deal, man. That's really cool. I'm excited for you guys. Yeah. Uh, well, let me let me just leave it with one last question, which is well, second last. I've got a s- stupid question at the end, just to, just because I. Um, but the b- last big question is like, what is it that uh, that's keeping you motivated to train right now? Like, what is the the goal you're trying to achieve? Because you've pretty much maxed out what you can do in Canada. You've you've done the double mm-hmm. national champion thing twice. So what's left? Like, does it? Are you motivated for that? World Cup finals for that medal for the Olympics like what's what's the thing really driving you at the moment mm. as in that's kind of an interesting question as in like right now I'm kind of asking that myself like asking that myself and like I guess after the success I'm like asking okay now what now what do I want to do and I think like the goal like right now kind of guess a bit more um and the short term goals would be like to be a bit more of a consistent semi-finalist. So just like getting that kind of experience of like being, I guess, more consistent, which can kind of build up confidence in, in my abilities at that level. And also just kind of experience competing in semis. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I sympathize with like not knowing where your goals are when you're in the post-comp depression. Yeah. Like for yeah. me, it's like the post well, like for me, it's like post comp depression for running a competition, or like mm-hmm. post performance depression, or whatever. So I feel I, I apologize for asking you when you're in like mm-hmm. that rut. Um, all right, that I I appreciate all your really honest answers. I got one last question, and I'm gonna throw my friend under the bus if it turns out that this didn't actually happen. So, but is there is there a chance that as you walked out for the final route in the lead competition that you like destroyed a computer somehow <laughs> by accident? Is this real? Yep. Tell me, tell me what happened. It wasn't on the. I had to look through the final stream, and I didn't see anything. So I was trying to figure out what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I was just like walking, kind of just um down some stairs. I kind of just like trying to be as like relaxed as possible. Kind of just like looking straight ahead. I kind I was carrying my water bottle, kind of like sort of like on the rail, railing to the side, and then like I I had my shoes were just like weren't even on just like so like half on and then like the heels weren't on and then I just kind of missed a step slightly and kind of slipped dropped my water bottle just like kind of tumbled down a little bit and then my water bottle crashed down like onto like a computer on the table and just like 
<laughs> yeah. <that> was, <laughs> yeah. I just, all I heard was she, uh, my friend Sachi was one of the setters at the event and she said, like, yeah, you dropped the water bottle on a computer. And she said that like the monitor like lifted off the table and just like, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I thought that was really funny. So mm-hmm. I, I wish the live stream had caught it, but, uh, <laughs> I was wondering like, man, that's a weird thing to have happened to you right before you yeah. do a final yeah, was, yeah. It was kind of like, <laughs> I was like okay, a little, bit of, a little bit of excitement. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's super funny. Well, listen, I want to thank you for for taking the time. Congratulations on both the wins. Um, I totally sympathize with uh, with this little bit of decompression rut that you're in, but I'm excited for, well, for you to see how this training goes, how the the change in Innsbruck goes. That's really cool. So I want to wish you the best. And at the end, if there's just anybody you want to like shout out to or or say hi to, go for it. Thank you. I don't. <laughs> no problem. That's all cool. Thanks a lot, Guy. Uh, best of luck. And uh, and uh, if you want to watch more interviews like this, uh, make sure you check out the Plastic Weekly YouTube channel, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.